the Nigerian Customs Service is an independent enforcement agency responsible for the collection of customs revenue and anti-smuggling efforts. It is known for its strict measures and rules against indiscipline. In the year 1999, it lost one of its most outstanding officers, not to death, but to retirement after serving the nation for 35 years. He is Chief Israel Olufemi Orija. Born in 1943, Israel Orija attended Ologbo Primary School between 1949 and 1956. In 1958, he proceeded to Eko Boys High School where he had a secondary education. He enrolled at the Yaba College of Technology for Certificate in Supervision and Management between 1966 and 1969. A year later, he was admitted into the University of Lagos to study political science. I'm the first son. Uh, I was born into uh, the White Garment Church, one Balugo Street, West, in Lagos. I got a job in 1964 at uh, the Federal Ministry of Works. I worked uh, till uh, it, it is something before I was transferred to customs. And I worked in customs till I retired in 1998, strict 99. My father was very strict anyway, very strict. But uh, he, he was a listening father. Anytime there was a quarrel, I could walk into him and settle. But he was very strict. As the first son to a disciplinary father, Chief Orija's love and passion for community development started from the 80s while still living on Lagos Island. But his activism finally began in 1999 when he retired from active public service. In the evening, you saw the area boys moving about with cutlass, bottles and all that. And anybody, nobody could even sit anywhere. We couldn't see, uh, stay here. So I developed writing from that point. So I was writing articles in the papers. And that led to my publishing the first book, Essence of uh, Community Development. That was the first book I wrote. Uh, I've uh, published so many articles again, which I am uh, tackling uh, memos of Chief I. O. Rija. That's the second one. So, when I saw the things happening around, I thought uh, I needed to take uh, action. So, uh, through that, I got some people together on the street. We started the landlord association, then we moved to the bigger one. In fact, when we started the landlord association, I didn't know about any CDA. And somebody told me we could align with uh, CDA. I said, what was CDA? He told me that CDA would uh, interact with the local government. So we went, and I was chosen the chairman of the CDA at that time. Community service for real job. You need to be committed to fulfill your obligations. As a young man, he learned from his father the values of diligence and selfless service. He applied these values in his career as an enforcement agent with the Nigerian Customs. Orija has a memorable story to share. We were groomed in Ministry of Works on Estos Matters. When I got to Customs, we had Ango, Brigadier Ango as a, the head of Customs. He wanted me to do something that was wrong. Okay. One, the contractor quoted in Naira submitted invoice in dollars and which means it will affect the quantity and he wanted to force me to take them on charge. I said look, my boys will do it but me I will not append my signature. So we processed it to him, he was to append the signature but a colleague came in and said ah, Orija has not signed. He said ah, they was pleading with me that I said look, I wouldn't ruin your name. I have my name to keep and that uh, you can sign for me, I said, uh, but I will sign. Then I went to my immediate boss, who was a, a deputy controller general, uh, a deputy controller general. I told him, look, there are rules guiding this thing. The contractor has to sign indemnity for me. 
I said, go and do it now. Then I went back, uh, called the uh, agent to the contractor. He signed for me. I made copies for my immediate boss. I kept the remaining. Then he pushed it. It was paid. And uh, that was, you see, it was memorable because things were not done that way. Otherwise, because it was a general, you just signed. He is also an accomplished publisher who many sees as a role model. It's my role model. I attribute a lot of, I learn a lot of things from him. Even as of today, I don't do without a day passing without coming to him. He's a problem solver. Anything that happens in this country, they will rush to him and he will take time to solve the problem. Even without consulting me. He has been given a, uh, an award at the CDC level when he was the CDC chairman. And uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, like this street, there was a time he hired uh, laborers to come and rehabilitate this road on his own. Uh, just to see that the community is, is all right. Our community champion for today sees Governor Akiumi Ambode as the only governor in Nigeria who is practicing real inclusive grassroots governance. When he won the election, the current uh, advisory council chairman and myself, we attended the reformation committee, which is a service. We were writing on recognition. You see, that's why he's the first person to practice inclusive governance. And that's why he gave us an SA communities and SSA uh, communities, the first person in whatever he does, he must bring in the opinions of the, the communities. Come to see what is happening now. He's written down, down to the people, the grassroots people, the very grassroots people, which is a joy to me. He urged members of the corporate organizations to be more responsible to their host communities so as to complement the efforts of Governor Akiyomi Ambodes in empowering the 